Hey everyone, it's Will Button. So I was recording day four for my new packed course, Blockchain in Seven Days, whenever this happened. We've had this tree that's about ready to fall. It's coming up through the roots due to all the monsoons that have been coming through. So the landscapers show up today and we got this guy hanging out there at the top of the tree, cutting it down one section at a time. Pretty cool and I'm grateful that they're doing it before it falls into the house and crashes through the window, but it does make it a little difficult to record videos. Thought it would be a cool opportunity though to show you what goes on behind the scenes for recording video. Got my setup here, I use a Heil PR40 mic and that feeds into a Behringer mixing board that has a USB output that goes over to the laptop here. And then the laptop's where I record everything from. The actual screen recording that you see when you're watching the video comes from the laptop display itself. Then I use the upper display there to keep Camt Camtasia running where I record the videos and edit them. Got my Trello board. And then I keep my notes up there that keep me on task as well as I'm going through the recording. So since I've got a little time here, I wanted to leave you with some, some little bit of value to make the video worth watching. And I wanna talk about deploying your Ethereum contracts or your smart contracts. So you build your smart contract in your application and you deploy it. You get users starting to use it. Now you've got this data stored in your contract and then you add a new feature or you have to fix a bug or for whatever reason you have to redeploy your contract. Well, your original contract when you deployed it goes to the Ethereum network and it gets a specific address. Then when you redeploy that contract because of a code change, it gets a new address. So guess what? All of your data that you had in your old contract is still in that old contract. It's not in your new contract. And the short, short way to look at that is to say that Ethereum contracts aren't upgradable. So what do, you, what do you do about that? There's a couple of different strategies and each has its pros and cons. Um, one way is you can have like a, um, a contract that you call that you never change and it just references what the current contract is. So whenever your application starts, you call that contract, you get the address of your current production contract, and then you call that contract. The challenge there is when you deploy a new production contract, you have to have a strategy for migrating your data from your previous production contract to your new production contract. The other way to do it is through delegate call. So you have one contract that your application talks to and everything that it does, it just delegates that call to a different contract that has that. It's similar to like a microservices approach. I guess we could call it like a micro contract approach so that each function within your application is its own contract and you have one master contract that just does a delegate call that you pass in the address of that contract to. The challenge with that one is um, when you do a delegate call operation within Solidity, you don't get the responses back, um, you don't get the data back, and so you have to handle your coding of that differently. Um, really, the difference between the two is which problem do you want to write code for. The end result is the same, you're solving the same problem, it's just which one fits within your workflow or um, your skill set that makes one preferable to the other. Uh, there's a lot more we can go into on that and so keep an eye out here because I'll do more videos on it where we do some examples and I'll have some code for you and show you actual working uh, strategies on how to deal with both of those. So I'll see you then.